Hello dear students. Today as the introductory class of cell biology course. In this course we will focus on topics that are really important to understand in the field of cell biology. So in today's lecture we will discuss about what are the key properties of a cell. But let's briefly talk about the discovery of cell. For the very first time, the cell was studied uh, by Robert Hooke, who was an English microscopist. Hooke examined a uh, uh, cork of tree under his microscope and found that the cork of tree under microscope seems like honeycomb uh, that contains uh, many small units. And to these small units, Hook named as cells. At the same time, in 1667, another person from Harlem, who was normally selling clothes, but in their free time, he was also constructing sample microscopes. His name was Anton Van Leon Hook. He examined drops of pond water, rainwater, and well water under his microscope and observed various forms of bacteria and calculated their sizes as well and later he also studied uh, different other cells like red blood cells of human and spermatozoa of human dogs and insects and then for many years no one was actively working to study cells but in 1838 a german person who was actually a liar examined tissues of plants and become a botanist. Uh, his name was Slyden. He found that the plants are made of cells and the embryo of plants arose from a single cell. He was a really amazing guy. He was uh, a liar actually but studied plants as well. Later in 1839 Swan, who was a zoologist and a Sliden friend as well, published a report on cellular basis of life. The Swan reported that cells of plants and animals have similarities in structures, and he proposed and he proposed the popular two tenets of cell theory that all living organisms are composed of one or more cells and cells and the cell is the structural unit of life and after many years in 1855 Rudolf Forkum another German uh, pathologist added third tenet to this cell theory that cell only arise from pre-existing cells. So this was just a history, brief history of scientists who studied cell in the beginning. discuss the key properties that cell possess. Uh, every living plant, animal and cell have two basic things in common. The ability to be alive and death. Like if we isolate cells from our lungs, uh, kidneys or any other living tissues of our body, we can easily culture those cells in a tissue culture laboratory where they will grow and reproduce for a specific time. But if we mistreat these cells in our lab, like not providing the medium that are essential for cell growth, the cells will die. Uh, the cells are also highly complex and organized as well. Keep in mind, if something is more complex, it means it will be more accurate in functioning. 
that's why the parts of cells are always in proper place within the cell and perform functions with high accuracy for example during a dna du duplication process the chance of error is less than one mistake every 10 million nucleotides so this is really high precision process the cells also working in an organized way to maintain the whole system within the cell for example uh, a cell will be much aware from their neighbor cells like what is uh, what kind of chemical processes uh, as happening in neighbor cells and what i have to do right now so the cell must be very very organized uh, number three is the cell possess genetic programs it means that the information within cells are encoded in collection of genes these genes instruct the cell to behave according to specific genetic instructions for example genes instruct the cell to make different structures or to divide themselves or to perform specific cellular activity that is urgently required according to the need of a cell. The fourth is cell uh, acquire and utilize energy. Uh, as you know inside the cell uh, a lot of cellular processes are happening. Uh, for that activities cell need energy. The animals primarily obtain their energy from glucose like in humans the glucose is released from liver and to the blood that circulates throughout the body and delivering chemical energy to all cell then inside the cell glucose is broken down to provide ATPs for various cellular activities according to their need so cell need energy for function for normal function the cells also have the ability to reproduce themselves every living organism is uh, normally produced by reproduction process so the cells also able to reproduce themselves and normally uh, by division like from one mother cells to two mother cells but important as the cell before division must be able to faithfully divide their genetic materials uh, if like if the f1 cell f1 cell is going to divide into two it will first uh, duplicate their genetic materials accordingly in most cases the two daughter cells have equal volume but in some cases like oocyte cell division in humans the daughter cells size are not equal like this is uh, two newly formed oocyte cells one has big cytoplasm and the other has not even both have received equal half genetic materials and the last is the cell uh, have the ability of self-regulation for example cell shows durability to any dangerous changing in composition outside a cell or inside a cell and if cell lost this self-regulatory mechanism and did mistake in any cellular processes like in DNA duplication process in during cell division then it cause mutation another example is if cell loss the growth self regulation mechanism then the result will be cancer cells the cancer cell even have the ability to destroy the whole organism so self-regulatory mechanism of cell is really really important for uh, normal 
a specific function of a cell at the right time. That's all for today's lecture.